Okay, welcome back, everyone. Um, what we'll do, we'll rip into um, Martini Investments now. If, are you all here, Rob? Yeah, yeah. Yep. You know, go for your life, and and I'm and I'm more more than prepared to give you more time. So, fill your boots. Well, um, kia ora koutou. Um, I'm Mike Fisher from the Urban Development Team at Christchurch NZ, and in my role there, it's a privilege to um, be the chair of the Better for Brighton Working Group, which I've got members of here today with me. Um, so the group is a collaboration of the public and private sectors along with the community coordinating investment projects at the eastern end of New Brighton Mall. Um, so this is a unique and really positive approach for the city and this effort is crucial to getting coordination of the investment that's going on um, and get the greatest outcome for New Brighton and the city. Um, re regeneration New Brighton is, is really gaining momentum now. Um, really significant investment going on, some of the most significant investment in the area in many years and probably decades I think. Um, so members of the group are going to present their exciting projects um, today, which is really about leveraging the council's investment, capital investment in the mall upgrade, uh, or AMAV, which is set out on the draft LTP. Um, this is alongside, obviously, other public sector, uh, the work we're doing um, in regeneration efforts, looking to use all the tools um, that we can to really continue to gain momentum and make sure it, it continues. So this is also, the, the, the work here is integral and, and connected to the work in Pages Road Bridge and the craft funding, and we look forward to seeing these delivered as well. So I'm going to hand over to Robbie, um, he'll talk a little bit about his work and then he'll pass on to the community leadership group, so thanks for having us. Thank you. Cool, thank you. Uh, my name's Robbie Harris uh, and I'm working on a private development in New Brighton called Pearside. <clears throat> New Brighton is an area in dire need of investment. It is an enormous. It is also an enormous opportunity for Christchurch. The current state in New Brighton can be traced back to when the area obtained the ability for shops to trade on a sh Saturday when the rest of the city could not. This led to an unprecedented retail boom. It was like a gold rush, and it displaced what was an active seaside recreational destination, as it made way for an enormous shopping mall. Shopping mall was a house of cards, which relied on the fact that nothing else in the city was open on a Saturday. Inevitably, once every, everywhere else was able to open, travelling across the city for shopping no longer made sense. The boom cycle was over and the bus cycle began. Left behind was an enormous oversupply of retail spaces, which over time has ultimately led to urban decay. This urban decay has created a downward spiral, resulting in poorly maintained buildings, no connectivity between relevant shops, resulting in the vast majority of expenditure of locals, which should be spent in their own commercial centre, getting spent in other commercial centres. This significantly reduces the amenity of living in the area and increases time, money and emissions on travel unnecessarily for a sub substantial amount of people. The redevelopment of New Brighton Mall is critical to both restoring amenity to locals, but the golden opportunity is to reimagine the seaside experience in Christchurch. Despite the current state of the mall, New Brighton as a destination still thrives. The new hot pools and playground... Actually, I was meant to play this video. Pop that on. Um, the redevelopment of, uh, despite the current state of the mall, New Brighton as a destination still thrives. The new hot pools and playground and resulting, uh, has resulted in a significant increase in, in visitation of the area and it's solid proof that New Brighton is a magnet for recreation and experience. It bolsters the natural draw of the beach and complements the pier as a focal point. This is unsurprising as for a century leading up to the Saturday shopping boom, the area naturally established as a recreational area and it was even nicknamed Canterbury's Playground. Over the past two years, uh, we've acquired and consolidated various key pieces of land recreating, <coughs> sorry, uh, of land creating an area similar to the footprint of uh, about Riverside Market and the Terrace combined. Uh, we're now in the process of creating Pearside, which will be a new seaside destination for Christchurch and a hub for locals to bring them back to their own neighbourhood centre. Embracing a seaside feel with a collection of hospitality, local shopping and other experiences, Pearside will be a destination, enhancing our city by transforming the seaside experience. New Brighton makes sense as a key destination, given its accessibility from the city, its location, which is sandwiched between the beach and what will become the new green corridor, uh, and is already just a natural draw for visitors. The current council projects are critical uh, to reversing 
uh, critical to New Brighton to reverse in the damage from that Saturday shopping era. And alongside it, significant private investment is going in into turning this around. And we're working to the best of our ability to the master plan already created. So we're relying on the budget remaining in place and this investment's not just for New Brighton, but for all of Christchurch. So there's just a couple of little shots, early sort of shots of what we're doing down on Marine Parade. Um, and that's sort of an overview of the uh, of kind of the development area, which you see the the mall in the middle with the palm trees, uh, which is part of the forming the budget. So I'll hand it over to Neil. Kia ora koutou. My name's Neil Cooper, and I'm working with the community leadership group to um, uh, make to ensure that this village green concept actually goes ahead. It started back in uh, late 2019 when the um, Canterbury Earthquake Appeal Trust awarded 2.3 million to the local to the New Brighton community to um, to come up with a project. The only condition of the funding was that the project, whatever it might be, had to be agreeable to the uh, the community as a whole, and that has been quite an issue in itself. However, the community leadership group was established. Um, and through an ongoing series of uh, <coughs> research and um, in community engagement, it was obvious that the key thing for the New Brighton community was, in fact, improvements to the mall. Um, at around about the same time, Martini Investments, Robbie, and, um, bought the um, a section of the land just on the southern side of the mall um, by, the, um, by the pier, and there was a space in that. And we worked with Robbie. He was agreeable to leasing that space to the community to make this project um, or to give the project a, a site. That's what's led to the Village Green, Con well, what we're now calling the Village Green concept now. Um, it's a, largely a grass area with a stage at the end of it, um, a number of um, huts around it. Um, the huts are going to be available for. Um, uh, sort of an enhancement on the Saturday market concept, but also there for community use. Um, the grass in the stage is there for a general gathering space, um, entertainment area, whatever we like. Uh, there will be a, um, another uh, management group that will be in charge of the area, and it will be their job to promote the space to ensure that it's um, a viable, ongoing and useful space for the community. Also attracted, hopefully, to the... Um, um, sorry, the the wider community from New Br from not just New Brighton but Christchurch and people outside. Uh, we're hoping to have all this operating by the end of the year. The concept was presented to the community in February 2023, and the results speak for themselves. And I'll pass on to Lynn. So about a year ago, oh sorry, can, my name is Lynn. I'm the deputy chair of the CSG group. Thank you, Sorry. Um, so about a year ago, um, we conducted a survey um, in the Greater Brighton area. So about 15,000 people um, live there. So over 600 survey responses and thousands of positive social media in, in, in interactions, which indicated a staggering 90% um, support of our project. That's 90%. 70 kind of loved it all. 19% kind of wanted some tweaks, which we are tweaking now. Um, that's an impressive result, I reckon, especially for the East. Um, as we all know, engagement is hard work. So only fair to go back to the public now. A little bit biased on that one. Um, as someone who works in Brighton, I could not agree more with Brighton being the unpolished jewel of Christchurch. It's a great place to live in, and it's really good to feel and see the vibe, anticipa anticipation, and positivity we come across on the street and social media for this project. That's not a small feat or achievement. And personally, I'm very proud of the team working tirelessly. Is that the right word? Tirelessly, but I am tired, kind of, um, and voluntarily behind the scenes to make this happen. To close, I'd like to hand over to Neil. These are just some comments that have come through from the community recently, showed their general level of excitement. Um, and positivity about what's being planned. Um, even the dog got in on the act. Um, so just in summary, first of all, thank you for the support that we've had so far. It is certainly appreciated. 
um, the, um, the momentum that we've got going is particularly good. This is one of the very few projects, I believe, where you actually have um, private enterprise through the um, commercial redevelopment, the community engagement at a very high level, and actions from the council to bring about what we're trying to do. And it's those three C's, like commercial, community, and council, that I think makes this stand apart from anything else. And the big thing about it is that your ongoing support of this project will mean incredible leverage from council funds into what is benefit for the community. So we do thank you um, and look forward to your ongoing support. Um, I do have some cupcakes here. Definitely. You're coming up for a recess. Um, I'm also happy to accept any um, questions that you might have. Kelly, thank you. Um, thanks very much, team, uh, particularly Robbie, for your family investing uh, in the area. And, um, you know, it's amazing that you guys are all working together. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And actually getting the support of the community is, uh, is an art in itself. So congratulations on that. How can we help you? What are the things that we can do to help facilitate what you're doing? Well, I think the, the main thing actually is that sort of what what's in the budget, you know, just keeping it in there. That, that's kind of it. Just keep it on track. That, that's I think the first uh, message that that we have. You know, it, it's a like from my perspective and our, our invest, investment side. You know, we sort of some of that stuff in the in the long term plan and in the budget was was part of the you know purchase. Knowing that that mall was getting upgraded in the middle, knowing that this this new road will eventually come in. That kind of fixes uh, fixes the connectivity and you know that bridge coming along which actually then kind of really emphasizes it as a destination all that kind of stuff is uh, already there it's just simply keeping it keeping it on tracks uh, yeah a big one right. for us thanks I'm sure mm. Celeste will have a question yes she has yes far away uh, I just want to say first of all thanks so much for um, you know combined commitment to the area I know that um, People are really looking forward to the projects being delivered and it's great to see that different parties are working together. So I just want to say hats off to you know, the work that you guys have been doing. Um, my question is, in addition to the funding that's on budget currently in the draft long-term plan for the mall and RMAV, is there additional things that you think would be helpful to make this project work? So I'm thinking around transport connections, you know, uh, public transport kind of linkages. Are there other bits that you think we need to keep our eyes on as part of this process? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so definitely the the public uh, public transport one was a big one. We did it earlier on. Uh, forget the exact numbers, but we did a, a a bit of an exercise to see how long it took the on average to get to Sumner on a bus compared to New Brighton. And despite Sumner being further away, I think Brighton was on average like almost fifteen minutes longer or something like that. It was like twenty five minutes versus forty forty five or something like that. Right. So so despite it having pretty good connectivity in New Brighton. It's very central. Um, in fact, I, I'd worked it out that about that Ferrymead roundabout, everything outside of Ferrymead roundabout is quicker to get to New Brighton than, than Sumner, uh, anything beyond that. So it's a very accessible beach. Um, yeah, the, the, the public transport's not there. And obviously we wanna, we wanna be bringing more people out. We want people to be able to experience it and, and there's hospitality and things like that. So being able to get to and from the, the city could actually be quite a, um, you know, another kind of part of that experience. Um, and, and, yeah. I'll and I'll just say, like, uh, cheering the group's great because it's a lively group, really good participation from the community and the private investment. And I think there's been talk about signage, continuing to support all the activation efforts, events, making sure that all of the tools, as I just mentioned earlier, are used that council has that go alongside what the community and the private sector can bring. So continued pushing and, and making sure it gets really good momentum. Just a quick one. You're going to anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of, of, we've heard a lot about, you know, Destination Banks Peninsula, but do you have any thoughts on Destination New Brighton in terms of, we're already a destination for some of the biggest events in the city. Do you think that, say, the Village Green and these new activated spaces will provide another way that we can, um, you know, celebrate this great city we're living in? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. What a question, Celeste. Of course, you know, we will totally kind of rock this part of the town, I reckon. So, um, yeah, events, you, you name it. We have already some plans. I think Robbie and I are working on something already. Yeah. Might be kind of something called Oktoberfest. But, um, <laughs> so, 
But now, kind of seriously, it will be such a great space for run kind of events, um, concerts, anything. Yeah. So just to add to that, so I mean, that's a big, big part of the whole concept of the development. I hard to get into too much detail in, in a short amount of time, but um, you know, effectively, like I said, the before that Saturday trade era, the the area really was founded on 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 this kind of experience recreation, and so that's really at the heart of what we're doing. Um, that's what it naturally evolved to be. There was there was cinemas, there was hotels, there was all sorts of stuff, and then that kind of got made way for for clothes and you know groceries and whatever uh, else happened through that kind of period. So you know when we see an investment gets made along the right lines of of meeting that, and the hot pools is a really good example. You know you kind of get this really great success. It exceeded all expectations because it's very much in line with what works with the area. So. There was the band Rotunda back back in the day uh, where they did open air concerts and things like that. So those types of things uh, really worked in the area, and so we've built you know around that, and that's where working with these guys has been really good because uh, the Village Green sets this this really great area uh, that's right at the heart of it um, that can do it, and obviously also support the businesses that'll be investing uh, to be out there uh, because we're not, you know, it's not in the CBD. You don't have lots of people working in the area. We need to be able to be visiting and bringing, bring, bringing places in. But the spill on of, of activity afterwards is great. So we want to build on that too so that, you've, you know, you can go out to Brighton and spend a whole day there and have lots, lots of things to do. So, so just a question for me. When, when the first cab off the rank, so to speak, will be the, the Villa Green bit? Is that right? Have I, I, we're hoping to tie in with the village green in the first stage of um, Robbie's construction. So the the laneways at yeah. the end of the year. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So I mean, I'd be surprised. I'd be surprised actually if if the village village green was first. We're, we've we've yeah. started construction on some of the buildings, and we're, we've we've uh, got a consent at the moment for the next phase. So we're we're trying as quick as we can to get yeah towards the end of the year is uh, sort of starting to open. It's it's in various stages, but. Um, Hopefully, as much kind of happens all at once uh, as much as possible to, to, to minimise disruption. Yep. We're hoping that'll be by the end of the year for the village green, but that will depend on a lot of things like consents and so forth. No, no, that's cool. No, no, I'd just like to thank you for your enthusiasm. It's been a long time, not not long time coming from you guys because I know you've always been enthusiastic. But um, being a place where I spent most of my misspent youth, it's uh, it's got a lot of fond memories. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers.